Drone Racing League is the highest level of professional drone racing in the world. It transforms Major League Baseball stadiums around the U.S. into state-of-the-art drone racing tracks using the very structure of the stadium itself as part of the course. This year, the championship race is in Miami, Florida in the Marlins Stadium. I was given press access to go onto the track before the race and interview each of the racers before what will be the largest drone race ever to take place with nearly 15,000 tickets sold. Join us in this series to take you inside the mind of the fastest flying racers in the ultimate test of skill, concentration, and technology. We're here with Gab 707. I think possibly the most senior pilot on the roster, <laughs> not just age-wise, but as far as seasons on the racer four. In fact, it was probably a different racer when you started. It was a different racer. We were on the racer two. The first season, then we went to Racer 3, and now Racer 4. So you've really seen not just the evolution of the drones, but the entire league. Gab 707 is the longest flying professional drone pilot in the drone racing league. Seven years of Gab 707 in DRL. He is calm, he is consistent, and in 2023, the PhD in physics, Canadian drone racer Gab has been the runner up for the DRL championship twice, but is still looking for his first title. Consistency, experience, and years of performing under pressure are all on Gab 707's side. Be the biggest drone race that's ever taken place in any league anywhere. How does it feel to have seen the league evolve to this point? You know, it's almost the journey of my life, I feel like, <laughs> because seven years is a lot to put in a life. You know, at the start, like I just did it for fun. Like we just ordered some parts from China and it was just fun putting these things together, right? And then you go out with your friends and just race in a park. And that was, that was already, that was mind blowing. And then one thing after another, you know, um, DRL came along and they, they had this grand dream of what this sport could be in the future. And then things have been building ever since. And it's been so incredible to see the progression, not only of the technology, but, you know, pilot skill, because that didn't exist back then. Like if, you, if we could yeah. barely make it through the gates back then, like it's, it's, it's so hard to fly these drones. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been doing it for a while. It is so hard to see the level of precision that people have nowadays is through the roof. It's been impressive to see you over the years stay competitive whereas a lot of people other former top people in the league champions just were not able to do so and you stood the test of time was it your practice was it your enthusiasm for the sport what kept you in it so long competitive it's hard i think there's kind of twofold answer to that the first part is is the mental part and i think a lot of people come on a racing circuit like that because they have something to prove right at heart like you want to be the world champion you need to be the best Right? You need to race the fastest, uh, be the bestest drone racer in the world. And that is something that is consuming. And you can do that for a number of years. You get shut down because these are the world's best pilots. So you think, sure, I'm, I'm hot stuff, I'm coming in. And then it's hard. You realize how hard it is and it consumes you after one, two years. And I think at some point people just run out of steam to really do it properly. Uh, like my attitude towards it is, is a bit more measured and I try to be, I enjoy the racing part of it very much. And I tr enjoy the challenge part of it. It's not necessarily, I absolutely, like it doesn't consume me and I try to be measured in how, in how it is to me. That's good advice for people that are wanting to keep with something but not burn out and stay actually to where you like it. At some point you need to transition yourself from, you know, pure passion, I'm going to invest 150%, I'm going to eat only beans for a year <laughs> and make the sacrifices, right? And, and you do that at the start. Of course, I did that too. But at, at some point you need to become a professional about it. You need to understand what is it that I need to do to be at my highest peak performance and generally it's not by burning yourself out you know you need to be measured you need to be organized and you need to train properly you need to eat properly you need to sleep properly and it's all these things that you learn over time and learn to be a pro that's really what it, i think it boils down really drone racing is a sport about reflexes about mental toughness and about maintaining an absolute 100% amount of focus with an incredible amount of distraction. Every neuron of focus that your brain can muster towards that drone flying exactly where it needs to be. Everything has to be perfect in order for you to end up on top of that podium. Even with the most experience of every racer there, no one on earth has the experience of performing to a live audience of this magnitude. Nearly 15,000 people. Is the experience going to be enough to give him that advantage? And is he finally going to be able to walk away with that championship he's been working towards for over seven years? So you've been here more than anyone else here. Do you still have any nerves at all? <laughs> of course. <laughs>
you know, any, any kind of moment where you, you get put on, on, on the stepping stone and it's like, all right, everything you've learned in your past, like needs to funnel through the tip of your fingers right now. Everything you've ever learned, everything you've ever trained for is right here, right now. What can you bring to the table? And that is, that is hard. That is hard to bring on a human being. I, I just try to, you know, just focus on, on the racing part of it, focus on turn by turn. I know how to take the turns. What I can't deal with is what everyone else is going to do. And as soon as you start thinking about that, you're you're out of there. <laughs> well, that's a really good uh, way to look at it. And we're excited to see you here. Good luck tonight. Yeah. Hope that you have some good results. Gap 707, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> to see more of this series, subscribe so that you don't miss the other big interviews with the DRL racers leading up to the championship. Catch Amari, MCK, Halo Walker, Alex FPB, and the rest here on the Johnny 5 FPV channel.